Hello, everybody. My name is Nick Birchall. I'll be with you today to give you an update on Map Publisher and Geographic Imager. So I'll be uh, in this presentation, I'll be providing an overview of the latest amazing features and enhancements we develop for both products and how we continue to bridge the gap between GIS and high quality graphics directly within the Adobe environment. So I'm going to talk to you a bit about some of the customer insights we get, which helps us make our decisions, some universal changes that we've made to both Map Publisher and Geographic Imager, and what's upcoming in that area, as well as specific updates for you on both Map Publisher and GI. So before I get into all the cool improvements we've added and are in the progress of adding, I wanted to make sure you have full visibility on the great insights we get on how our wonderful software applications are being used and how our key connections are continuously helping us drive our roadmap. Firstly, our support team. Our talented team of support representatives are always on hand to help with questions you may have and are there to talk to you about potential improvements we can make to the software to meet your current and future needs. Be sure to check out the support overview later today with Kate for all the information you need to reach out to them and submit your feedback. Over the last few months, we have added in a customer success department to help onboard new customers and to proactively assist you in ensuring you remain productive with workflow insights and custom training services. Be sure to check out the short overview with Patricia this afternoon. By engaging with you directly, we can also continue to learn about all the wonderful ways that you have integrated our tools into your workflows so we can better fine tune our offerings to help you. We still offer our standard training courses with many of our list of global resellers offering similar courses, even in these times where most of us remain remote. As attendees come, a, come from an array of different professions and skill levels, we always acquire valuable insights from them on how our tools will be applied in their work and ideas on features we can add or improve. We continue to attend a plethora of conferences to meet with existing and potential customers and to learn from them. Key events for us in desktop continue to be NASIS, Adobe Max, Adobe Creative Week, AAG, and GeoIgnite, where feature ideas brought forward are always in abundance. We host and monitor forums on Avenza.com, where you our end users can discuss your workflows and in partnership with each other, solve workflow problems. It's also a great source for us to learn. We continue to invite our end users to showcase their stories through blogs. Recently, we have published some great content on Avenza.com from some key customers, including the recent mapping class series. If you are interested in writing a blog with us, please do reach out. Our publisher and geographic imager have had built-in analytics for a few years now. Did you miss that checkbox in the installer? This really helps us better understand your workflows, system information, key or perhaps underutilized tools and versions of Adobe that, you're, that you are utilizing with our extensions. We continue to offer beta versions of our software releases when we develop larger features. We hope you always understand the why for every feature request we receive, but this way we can sure we really have. We are very active on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook through our marketing team. So feel free to comment on and repost the information we share there so we can gain an even deeper understanding of our customer base and the industries you serve. We continue to have a huge partner network, which we engage with fully, whether it's our reseller network, many of whom offer additional services on Avenza software or our key customer alliances. We are always there to have a chat. And finally, our own staff always offer deeply valuable perspectives to us. We have cartography and GIS expertise fully in QA, support, customer services, marketing, and sales. We collaborate fully with so many people internally when developing new features, and there is always plentiful feedback from them all. So now to improvements we've made recently to both Map Publisher and Geographic Imager, and what we're currently working on. We are working continuously to improve the backend map publisher engine to assure our users can continue their work in an optimized, seamless, design-focused cartographic environment. 
along with improvements to our engine and bug fixes, we have built on our current coordinate system catalog with updates to the coordinate system and projection library with Blue Marble Geographics. Our list of supported projections has grown with new additions, including the Natural Earth and Natural Earth 2 projections created by Tom Patterson. We haven't updated our core library here for some years, so I would really like to recognize our development and QA teams both here and at Blue Marble for completing this significant project over well over the last year. In version 10.7 of Map Publisher, which we released last December, and version 6.3 of Geographic Imager, which we released in February, we introduced our cloud floating license system. Based on RLM Cloud, it includes a customer portal to allow you to view and manage your floating licenses and license servers. The customer portal contains the ability to view licenses and servers associated with your organization. It is a good alternative to the traditional local floating license system because there is less reliance on a systems administrator to set up and maintain it, including configurations or changes to updates in software on client and server sides. During a vendor software updates, users with active maintenance instantly have their licenses updated with no additional configurations or needs to adjust settings. Another benefit is the very consistent uptime of licensed servers on the cloud. In our latest release of Map Publisher version 10.8, you will see the online product, product documentation and tutorials have now moved into the Avenza Support Center. This is a major step change for us as it allows us to now update content on the fly outside of core releases, so all the information accessible from the product is always kept up to date. For those of you who run our applications without internet connectivity, we still install an offline version to help you with the product. All geographic imager documentation is also now accessible in the support center and will be linked directly from the Photoshop environment in a forthcoming release. You can run Map Publisher and Geographic Imager on Apple devices using the new M1 processor in Rosetta mode. Full native support for the M1 processor will be coming later this year as full support will only be available after required updates to some of our externally developed libraries are released. So now to improvements and new features we've made recently to Map Publisher and what we're currently working on. In version 10.6 last year, we introduced the new spatial join tool. This has been a long-standing request for a number of years as our customers want to complete as many GIS operations as they can directly within the Map Publisher Illustrator environment. The spatial join tool joins attributes from features on one layer to features on another layer based on a spatial relationship. Spatial joins begin by selecting a target layer and comparing it spatially to another layer. Target features can inherit the attributes from the source features if and only if the two share the same spatial reference. Several spatial join types, types are supported and you can see them on the right here. Raster ECWs can now be imported into the Illustrator environment as of version 10.8 of Map Publisher, adding to the comprehensive list of geospatial image formats that can be added to your workspace with all referencing intact. We've made a slight improvement to the line plotter feature in the most recent release, where you can now batch add map and page locations as points to join between, rather than one at a time. Multi-select attribute columns in Edit Schema now supports modifying type, size, and assigning a default value, along with what you could do with batch selecting previously, such as deleting columns and adjusting visibility in the attribute viewer. The document summary panel accessed from the map views flyout panel now includes the last saved by information rather than the version it was originally created in. This is great information when collaborating on documents. So what's next? Uh, we're going to make some filtering improvements, um, such as the ability to set the default simplification filter on import 
to get around the pesky Adobe points per path limitation in the upcoming Illustrator 25.3 release, and then the bigger 26.0 release, which is commonly referred to as the Adobe Max release, um, we will be compatible with it. Um, so that Adobe Max release again will be dropping late October, early November. We're gonna be making some long overdue maintenance and improvements to the Label Pro add-on. We haven't ignored all the great feedback on that feature and are currently focused on expanding the, expanding the tool for your automated text placement workflows. We will be adding in capabilities to import additional geospatial formats soon, as we are committed to providing support for all the newly adopted formats as they become adopted. Additionally, one larger project we're keeping under wraps for now has been a popular feature request for some years. This will help give you a huge head start to take raw data to map if a more rapid output is needed. Please stay tuned for more details as we'll certainly be looking for some beta testers and insights as we get more fully into development there. We're also looking at expanding map selections to utilize our spatial join functionalities this year. Spatial join was introduced in version 10.6, as you heard, and we are looking to add options for selections to be performed based on the relationship of certain features to others from a spatial perspective. We'll also be adding support for importing TopoJSON, an extension of GeoJSON that encodes topology. Rather than representing geometries discreetly, geometries and TopoJSON files are stitched together from shared line segments. So we're looking forward to getting that one out soon. So now to some improvements we've made recently to Geographic Imager and what we're currently working on. Last year, we worked with Adobe on this new plugin manager to bring plugins front and center to creative cloud users and help address many of the install issues that partners and users may have struggled with on the previous Adobe Exchange. This was unveiled at Adobe Max last year and the new Geographic Imager panel is powered by Adobe's new Unified Extensibility Platform, or UXP, which provides tremendous performance and user interface improvements to the Geographic Imager plugin. As part of the UXP project, we also redesigned the UI of the Geographic Panel, Geographic Imager Panel. So now all your favorite GI tools are in separate panels that you can navigate through and dock with all the Photoshop panels natively. From version 6.0 of Geographic Imager, we introduced the ability to import vector data, areas, lines, points, and text. And you can import those as paths to overlay on top of your spatial imagery. Once imported, paths can be used to create selections and crop or eliminate specific areas or apply area-specific effects. Paths can also be used to check if spatial imagery is spatially accurate. Imported points and text can be used as annotations on an image to aid in quality assurance and quality control. In version 6.2, which we released last October, you can now export vector data from, all, from the document to various geospatial file formats. Almost all of the formats supported in the Map Publisher exporter. You can choose current path, or paths in a document, or export a path using a document selection. In version 6.2, we also introduced the remove background color setting to remove a selected background color from the image source on import. You can select a color in the preview image or use the quick select colors, white or black. You can also select a custom color and you would just click the color hyperlink to select your custom color. Remove background is also available when mosaicing in advanced import. Settings are available to select a color from an existing document. So what's next for Geographic Imager? As mentioned earlier, we've done a lot of work on the new coordinate system library in desktop. Our main focus is now to switch on these changes for Geographic Imager. And our QA team are certainly very busy on this right now. Photoshop compatibility is always key for our customers. As with Illustrator, the major release should be out late October, early November. 
We remain committed to providing Mac and Windows compatible versions of GI as soon as is feasible. So please don't upgrade your CC version until you check we have a compatible version available. As Photoshop now provide built-in tools to save imagery directly to the Adobe Cloud, we are committed to making sure imagery that is geospatially aware will also be supported there. So you can store your work and collaborate on it wherever you, wherever you are in a more streamlined fashion. Again, if any of you want to sign up as beta testers here, uh, that would be really appreciated and uh, we'll let you know when we have a prototype available. And finally, on a personal level, um, you know, I've really been thinking a lot about teamwork over the course of the last year and how our team has continued to provide so much value while at the same time needed to work together and support each other in everything that we do. Oh, this is the wrong team, but uh, anyway, this was quite a good one. Anyway, these are all the superstars at Avenza who make us who we are today. All these folks play a key part in making our customers successful with our products and services. And we have a very bright future ahead with our greatest resource. And that greatest resource is obviously our people. So I really wanna say thank you to everybody that's made everything that we do possible. So that's it from me. Uh, I hope you found this update informative and I really hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.